Hello, it's me, it's Craig and Flandy, and this is Take 3. Uh, Mariana Spring is the BBC disinformation social media correspondent, and she is the one in charge of truth for the BBC. Uh, BBC Never Lie, and uh, she has a an account, I think it's, it says it's a premium account with uh, LinkedIn, no judgments, please, uh, uh, over at LinkedIn, and in her profile, she's written, uh, delighted I've been promoted to... Or should I do it in an internet voice like everyone on YouTube does? Ah, delighted I've been promoted from you, you, you Porter. And I'm now the BBC's first disinformation and social media correspondent. She also says, I'll keep investigating real-world consequences of online disinformation, trolling, and all that is bad on social media. Fancy getting a job where you focus on things that are bad if you look for things that are bad on the internet you're going to find things that are bad if you report on things that are bad on the internet everyone's gonna think everything on the internet is bad it's pretty simple pretty basics it's unbalanced it's like here's all the bad things now let's say that she has um she is allowed to vote uh everyone's allowed to vote She's allowed to vote. She believes maybe she's somebody who believes quite categorically in um, the political party that she supports. Everyone supports a political party. Party. <laughs> Everyone likes a party. So um, she is capable and trained to separate that from the work that she does. So what is she doing that is so bad? Craig, what are you whinging about? Let the woman just get on with it. Um, I am, I am, I don't care enough. Um, but she did tweet this this more or 12 hours ago. The trolling in response to this, including misogynistic slurs, threatening and hateful messages, are just more proof of why investigating this is so important. Welcome, trolls. And stay tuned for my latest uh, Radio 4 podcast, a, a little bit of promotion for herself. Um, I think one of the issues I have is that there is this um, underlying self-promotion going on beyond her job, which is to tell us everything that's bad on the internet, right? So it's, uh, you know, welcoming trolls. So she thinks trolls are welcome. She likes trolls. So the BBC misinformation person likes trolls and welcomes them. So encourages trolls, Right. That's what welcome trolls means. Um, she's also talking about herself, misogynistic slurs, threatening and hateful messages. This isn't um, what we were told was going to be happening in her uh, LinkedIn. She said on her LinkedIn, I'll keep investigating real world consequences of online disinformation. That sounds more like a uh interesting thing about you know what is meta doing what is twitter doing and you know making things about that but what it boils down to is um who are the nasty people online who are um who don't agree with her it is it does seem like if you uh, show any adversity and that's not a bad thing to have if you're adverse to how somebody what somebody's saying or what somebody's doing that's fair enough right She's, she objects to that and then categorizes it as trolling, misogyny, misinformation, um, or all these like, um, you know, these words that everyone reels out. It's probably racist as well. It's probably sexist. It's, the, you know, it, it gets, it becomes such a noise that it just doesn't mean anything anymore. Now, media and what the media does, I am with Mariana 100%. If they're lying, we need to call them out. The BBC is no exception to the rule. And she will never, ever question what the BBC are doing. But they're saying we have somebody who questions what everyone's doing, except us. That's what's a bit weird about this role. And every time I've seen her uh, tweeting, she seems to be talking about, I'm going to be looking at the far right and what the far right are doing. What the right, And that's that's great. Do that. Absolutely do that. I can't stand them. Um, I'm, I'm almost to a base level. Somebody like Carl Benjamin who tweeted out to Jess Phillips about I wouldn't even R-word you. Absolutely disgusting. I hate it, right? 
and it needs to be called out and challenged. But um, I hate it. I don't necessarily hate Carl Benjamin because I don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm an adult. I'm a grown up person. I hate what's ha what happens. I don't hate people. Right. Um. I might. I might. <laughs> Do I hate people? Well, maybe I, maybe there are like extremists that I, I do actually hate. But um, this word "hate" is something that we bandy about so much, and it's uh, it's misused. Um, there is a legal definition of the word "hate," which I won't get into. She did make a a TV program um, where she detailed um, this uh, person here, Ellie Wilson, who who in 2017 uh, 2018 went through I think I think it was December 2017 to February 2018 went through an horrific experience with some guy um, who did the who R worded I'm not allowed to say it thanks sorry about that I'm not allowed to say it uh, but in this this documentary if you can find the uh, they, they did this thing where they had all these tweets floating around and she's staring out lonely and lost across the Thames from her or whatever it is, probably Glasgow, it's probably the Clyde, you know, and, and or our flat which overlooks the river, they're always cheap, uh, you know, and th this documentary is about Twitter, um, <laughs> and then I looked at some of these, oops, I looked at some of these tweets, uh, here's one of the tweets that um, the BBC deemed as hateful, at the same time, some women do go overboard with the amount of sexual attributes such as overly sexy clothing or flashy makeup. If you do intentionally, sorry, but you deserve it. I'm not a hater. If you do it, in, do it intentionally, sorry, but you deserve it. I'm not a hater. I'm just stating the obvious. There's a limit to lewdness. That's appalling. That's horrible. So people are writing horrible things. Is that hate? Does this person hate a group of people? Um, is it abusive? I don't know. I guess if you're a, if you're a victim, that, that you could see that as being abusive. Doesn't mean it is abusive, right? But so I'm, I'm I, all I'm doing is I'm not like um, siding with people who commit horrible crimes. What I'm doing is calling out. There's a there was a um, there was a, a, a Radio Four comedy uh, made. Um, I'll come back to that. See if I can find it here. Did I keep it up? Those are the headlines at 5.09. And for an immediate reaction to today's event, I think we can speak to Tom Hilton. Hello, Tom. Uh, hello. Chris Powell here from Radio 4. Thanks for speaking to us. Can I ask what your response is? Google it. It's Mitchell and Webb, and it's talking about um, the, the railway uh, yeah, improvements. I think it's a shame. So it's shame on the management, shame on the government. Well, I suppose. But look, can I just say I'm really not the best person to talk to about this. You see, by a spooky coincidence, I actually lost my wife in a train crash. Yes, we know. What, one that exactly this kind of system could have prevented. That's why we were in touch with you, Tom. And basically uh, this ra right. radio, radio 4 journalist says, oh, they're planning to do um, safety on the trains. How do you feel? And it's really appalling, isn't it? How do you feel about it? It's because you've got personal experience of a rail tragedy that your views are so important. Really? I would have thought that it was because I've got personal experience of a rail tragedy that my views should be dismissed out of hand. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. no. Well, that's say? actually why we're talking to you, says the journalist. Right? Well, you, you are, as a victim of this horrible uh, bad lack of safety on trains, how do you feel? Well, I really, and then the person replies, well, I really think I'm the worst person you can talk to because I'm actually somebody who, uh, whose wife died as a result of a, a train crash and I'm probably like, going to be massively biased when it comes to talk. This is the point they were making... And they would probably hate that he's actually getting used. But the point is that um, people who are right in the center and the heart of trauma um, and I, I are probably not going to be the best person to speak to when it comes to getting a balanced, fair point of view. I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to victims. Absolutely you should. And anyone who commits any crime should be, you know, locked away for as much time as the law demands. What I'm saying is that um, the Mitchell and Webb sketch makes a very good point about separation from this from the subject. Um, the, uh, the 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 images of the tweets. Here's another one that the documentary the BBC made showed. 
Ellie, please, I don't give a blank. It's half five in the morning. Goes so fast. That's trolling for sure. Uh, or is it? Is it actually somebody they're going? <laughs> I'm gonna get. Him. I'm gonna. Or is it somebody just like going? Let's get lost. You know, people people are very motivated to write negative things and very unmotivated to write positive things. And when you read positive things, they're so like sickly. Uh, let's see if I've got any more here. Yeah, here, here's one that was deemed like a hateful or trolling tweet. Someone's after celeb status. Notice I've taken these screen grabs from the show. These, This is the best, this is the crop they could find. The best they could find. Uh, let's see if there's any else, anyone else here. Uh, here we go, what's this one? Uh, would your life be happier if you put behind you the unkind things he said? So that you know, it. I can understand how that is upsetting. It's because like, oh, people are telling why are people. Why, why is not one hundred percent of people? This guy was convicted. He did what what she said he did, and he's doing time for it. Um, and people are commenting to her things like, "Would your life be happier if you put behind you the unkind things he said?" Right? That's a question. Right? That's asking a question. That is regarded by the BBC as a hateful, trolling, um, I don't know, probably misogynistic tweet. Um, here we go. And here's somebody else. Um, sorry, but I don't believe this girl one bit. That is the, being regarded by the BBC as a hateful, trolling, um, you know, what's the other word they're using misogynistic tweet uh, and it's edited into a bbc show that's available to watch an iplayer right as evidence that there is misinformation on the internet right this is what the bbc are doing and uh for me it's it this is misinformation by the way uh the jury in that court case some of them uh it wasn't unanimous so some of them felt the same way as this tweeter. So they are trolling by thinking that. They're trolling. They're hateful. Some of the jury members, according to the BBC, and Mariana Spring, because she agrees with this, and the person who tweeted this, Ellie Wilson, is that the jury were um, trolling misogynistic, <laughs> hateful people because they agreed with this tweeter. Guess what? The internet is a horrible place. Um, but where was the BBC verify you know, accounts and concerns. I know it's just been set up. But where where was uh, Mariana Spring when, um, who was appointed back in 22? Where was, uh, where was she? Very interested in looking into trolling, very interested in looking into hate on the internet. Where is the analysis of this kind of stuff? J.K. Rowling, all directed at J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, bitch, I'll kill you. Pee pee poo poo, bitch! I'll kill you. I'll kill J.K. Rowling. God, I hate J.K. Rowling. Please kill her. Um, hear me out, J.K. Rowling. Unironically, just kill her. I'm going to kill her. J kill J.K. Rowling. This, they, now, th these aren't tweets that are disagreeing with J.K. Rowling. These are calls to action by people on the left. But Mariana Spring's just looking at people on the right. I'm only looking at far right. That's all they're going to look at. They're not going to look at Antifa. They're not going to look at these these trolls, uh, the, the, a lot of them trans activists who hate J.K. Rowling, calling for her to be killed. It's it's shocking to me that the direction on focus of the BBC, our trusted national broadcaster, is just going to be looking over there. Not at themselves. Uh, they're not going to be looking over there. They're not going to be looking at J.K. Rowling. They're not going to be looking at what that left-wing group are doing. Do, you, do we all remember seeing footage of rioting and looting and people throwing Molotov tough cocktails and police cars being set on fire, all done under the BLM motif? You know? Eh, 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 eh. Then that is here to stay. Eh, eh. The only violent riots that you would see depicted in the BBC are ones that, like, was it, was it July the 6th? I can't remember the name of the date. But the one that happened at the Capitol building, which was bad. You know, they should have done what they did to the Capitol building. I watched it live. And I'm not defending what they're doing. I'm just saying, balance, please. Give us some balance. Please, I beg you, got to do the balance. If you want us to believe you, you have to do balance. 
You can't just focus on one area that suits your personal political ideology. Those tweets to J.K. Rowling are extremely disturbing. Not a tweet from somebody saying, I don't believe this girl. You know, that's 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 completely disproportionate. And the BBC are, are part and parcel with it. They're shoulder to shoulder um, with this kind of behavior because it's not getting called out. You know why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of being attacked. Uh, because, and also just to say, this is not getting away from the fact that there probably were are some horrible, horrible things that have been tweeted to Ellie Wilson, who's now a public figure. Um, she, I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm just saying that when the BBC decided to flag them, this is the cream of the crop, right? Um, uh, this is what you're dealing with. This is who you're engaging with. People who are sitting on buses, who haven't, who, you know, who, who haven't bothered... Who, are, who at night time spray stuff on walls or who sit there being warriors um, uh, in their unkempt houses or people who are just like a little bit batty or people who are just a little bit, got a lot of vim, who get really excited about politics and are hardly motivated. People, when they don't have any responsibility for what they put on so, to social media, um, you shouldn't be reacting to it. You should be just ignoring it. But to reporting it back as saying this is exactly why I've been set up by the BBC to do uh, this BBC Verify uh, because all the misogynists are coming out. Is it? No, they're not. That is the wrong way to present how people are on the internet. Most people on the internet are absolutely fine and solid. You find me blue ticks who are saying stuff to you that is misogynistic, Right. You find me blue ticks who are saying stuff to you that is um, uh, trolling. Find me blue ticks who are saying stuff to you that is harassment or any sort of uh, stuff like that. Because guess what? These are against Twitter rules. I saw that. These are against Twitter rules. So report them and do your job. Um, the people you're flagging are anonymous. Probably. And if they're not, report them. Let's get them kicked off. It's dead freaking easy. But no, um, this is misinformation. To present um, hateful tweets, a barrage, the, the, the line that Mariana uses in documentary. I made a, a video about this and they tried to get it taken down and they lost because it was fair use. Um, they, they, they were, it was fuming. A little guy like me with like hardly any like subscribers makes a video and the BBC get upset about it. Pathetic, isn't it? So the BBC Verify is uh, gonna, I'm going to be watching it like a hawk. And every time it gets criticised, it'll be hateful. It'll be misogyny. It will be trolling, right? Having an other opinion other than her opinion, it, I don't know, it makes you a, an imbecile. And uh, this is not going to go well. And the, the only reason I'm talking about her is because she is definitely promoting herself. My new podcast, my new this. I mean, look, I'm, I'm here writing a book. In 2022, she was promoting writing a book. And this is what I'm doing. Me, I, me, I, me, mine. All through the years, I, me, mine, I, me, mine, I, me, mine. I, me, 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 Not it, 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 it. It's me, 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 I, me, I'm doing, I'm me, I'm. This is what you get from Marianne Spring. And and I wouldn't normally, well, I would probably criticize the individual, but you're not doing this right. And if I was your producer, I'd be having a quiet word about, you know, look how you're using social media. Look how you're portraying the world of social media. You are just looking for bad things and only going to report on bad things. Nothing good that's happening on the internet is going to be focused on by BBC Verify. So if a company is really good and 100% truthful and honest and portraying facts, BBC Verify are going to ignore it and just flag to you the, you know, people sitting at their in their homes in Glasgow and uh, Filey and, uh, I don't know, Bristol. All these people at home are going to be watching their TVs and the BBC are telling them that the world's a terrible place. Well, I think it sucks. <laughs>